So did anybody come to worship God this morning? When I think of the goodness of God and all God's done just for little old me, my soul, my, my, my. And I know there ought to be some other believers in the house today when you think of what God has done for you. See, if you ever laid in a hospital or had to go visit somebody or a body at the funeral home or go see a young person or lay somebody to rest, you'll know there is a God. You'll know that without a shadow of a doubt. So our scripture this morning comes from John, that 19th chapter, that 28 through the 30th verse, which has already been read. Um, in our church, we stand for the reading of the scripture, but we say in the business, do as a custom that you do. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and I won't tarry long. I could just skip all of this and go to he got up early, and that should just help the church get up. Amen. But, you know, we live in a different time now. Well, we've got to give you some substance to take with you. And so the Bible says in that 19th chapter, the 28th verse, after this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, say accomplished, accomplished. that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Verse number 29 says, now there was a set vessel full of vinegar. And they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it on a hyssop and placed it to his mouth. Some would think that would be nasty, but we're going to get to that. When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Let us pray. Now, God, we come before you this hour. God wanted to say thank you. You've been good to us, God. You let us travel the highways and byways, God. Have some health and strength, clothed in our right mind. Had a little food, God. But most of all, you gave us your dying son, Jesus, that for our sins, he paid the price. Now, God, speak through us that they will hear you and not me. Bless it, God, as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. So you heard my bio, and while they were reading the bio, I was up here saying blah, 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 blah. All of that means absolutely nothing to you. But the last line should. And it said to serve God by serving his fellow man. You're not concerned with where I grew up at, who I'm married to, how many kids I got. You're not concerned about all of that. You should be concerned, though, about the last statement. So I come to serve God today. So either you help me or you don't. But I'm going to serve him. Because I was up early this morning. And I realized that when the rain stopped, he stopped the rain. He caused the wind to blow. There's nothing you and I can do except for depend on God. So just for a little while, if you'll tarry with me, I want to talk about from a thought, assignment, Complete. Have you ever completed anything? Maybe your goals were to graduate, lose a few pounds, get in better shape, start a business, get married, have some children, become a millionaire, get a record deal. For my young people, make good grades. Graduate high school, graduate college, so on and so on and so on. Have you ever completed anything? Now let me make this a little more personal. Have you ever completed anything for God? Maybe God called you to do something and you weren't sure it was him calling you. Maybe he told you to start a business and he laid the foundation and you turned away. Maybe he told you to sing in the choir or usher or help someone in the community and you didn't. Have you ever completed anything for God? Maybe he told you to feed the homeless 
assist, do something for him. And you did. Well, today we see an example of that with Christ on the cross. Christ completed his assignment. Assignment like no other. An assignment that Christ would be a ransom. He would pay the price for you and I. Have you completed your assignment? If we would, if you look at that 19th chapter, how John, the love child, records it. He says that he was on the cross. I don't know about you this morning, but if I was nailed to an old wooden fence, I would be screaming out in pain. Let's look at what happened before he got to the cross. Well, he was betrayed by a kiss. Be careful who you let kiss on. You. All for 30 pieces of silver. I know Dr. Willie can say everybody ain't got your best interest at heart. He was arrested by the Roman soldier. If you look back over in chapter 17, say every time they came to get him, they would fall back. They were expecting a war, but this was the man of God. Denied by Peter three times. Beaten unconsciously. Led in and out of court wrongfully accused and convicted by those he came to save. Mm -hmm. yes. If I had a few minutes, I'd say, be careful who you let speak on your behalf. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Wrongfully accused. He had done nothing wrong, yet the same folks he came to save shouted, crucify him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He received his crown, mm -hmm. not of glory, but of 72 thorns placed on his head. Maybe you don't see the agony that's going on on Calvary. Maybe you're missing the mark. The guilty pardon. But Rabbis, you can go free. Even though you caused the resurrection, you can go. Yet the righteous sentence to death. He was marched up a hill in shame. I don't know about you this morning. If you've ever been embarrassed, you would try to hide yourself. But Christ marched up the hill so you and I wouldn't have to. Allowed himself to be nailed to the cross for your sins and definitely for mine so you wouldn't have to. Look at this. He's completing the assignment assigned way back in Genesis. Yes. You know the story when Adam sinned, mm -hmm. when him and Eve had a piece of fruit. Yeah. Nothing happened till he ate the fruit mm -hmm. and sin entered into the world. Mm -hmm. God had a plan right then yeah. to restore you and I in a manner that we could worship him. But you got to understand, you've got to go through some things mm -hmm. to get or complete your assignment. Wow. So the first thing we recognize here in that 28th verse is that there are going to be some struggles and some sacrifices if you're ever going to complete your spiritual assignment. Amen. Amen. Let's look at what he went through. Some struggles. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. But from the time he was born, he was dealing with some haters. Mm -hmm. Young folks know what I'm talking about when I call them haters. Yeah. He was born in a manger. He is the king of kings, lord of lords, and yet he was born in a trough. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me it don't hurt. Mm -hmm. That the king of kings, lord of lords, born on this day, was laid in a trough. In a manger. I know we're in Manning, so there ought to be some farms around here because if you come down 521, there's plenty of land. Yeah. But if you know anything about animals, it don't smell good. All right. 
in a manger. Then they wrapped him tight in swaddling clothes. They didn't have a, you know, a new look outfit from Walmart for him to get in. You know, they didn't go down to Belks and get him some nice little booties to put on. They just wrapped him tight in swaddling rags. But he rich. He's the king of kings, lord of lords. And yet he's got on rags. Well, just maybe that wasn't enough. Well, how about the king at that time wanted to come meet the king? But his motives were not right. You know some folks who come and say, well, I got something to tell you. But they want to talk about somebody else. You all to tell them when they come in, your motives ain't right. I don't want to hear. But Herod came to want to see him. Herod wanted to spend some time with him. What he really wanted to do was kill him. Even at the age of two, he was being hunted by a king. Well, he went to Egypt, lived for two years. Then he came back. And the Bible gives us nothing from the age of two to the age of 12. At the age of 12, the Bible tells us they went on a pilgrimage. And when they were returning, they couldn't find Jesus. Young people, if you don't know your assignment, come to worship and let God show you what he can do. If you don't know what God is calling you to do, get down on your knees and let him speak to you. Well, the Bible tells us that they found this 12-year-old speaker talking to the wise men, or the elders of the city in the, in the sanctuary. He was teaching them. They were astounded by what this 12-year-old knew. The Bible declares that he tells them, his parents, when they come to get him, I have to be about my father's business. When you know what you're called to do, nothing can slow you down. Nothing can deter you from doing the will of the one who sent you. So you're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some folks who say they're in your corner, but they really are not. You're going to have some setbacks. You're going to be going through some things. You may hear no too many times to want to continue. But if you are God's child and you're working for the master, you must complete the assignment. You're going to have some disappointment, young people. You're going to think you're getting an A, and unfortunately, you're going to get a C. You're going to think you're going to the best college, and you're going to end up at the technical college. But if you stay with God, if you hold on to his unchanging hand, God will bless you well enough that he can take your community education and make you go to the White House. How about completing your assignment. You're going to have some disappointment. There are going to be some folks that are really close to you that ain't going to support your vision. There are going to be some folks that you know that you thought you had in your corner. They're going to turn their back on you. But you have to hold on to God's hand if you're going to complete your assignment. Not only are you going to have some struggles, but there are going to be some failures. Nobody gets to the top on one try. You got to keep climbing. It don't work out, you go back. But what you cannot do if you're going to complete the assignment, you cannot give up. Even if you lose, don't give up. Even if you struggle, don't give up. Even if you have to start over and over and over again, don't give up up. Complete your assignment. One more thing you need when you're doing the work. You need a prayer life. And I'm afraid in the 21st century in which we live in and all the mess we see, all the information we're fed, our prayer life suffers. So you wonder why the assignment isn't completed yet. You wonder why you're still struggling because you're not talking to the right person. Amen. You can call on all of the TV show hosts and all of your best friends, but you need to call King Jesus. Right. If you call on Jesus, if you just call on Jesus, if you just reach out, he'll reach down 
He'll pick you up. Somebody know he done done what? Turn you around. Place you on solid foundation. Giving you the strength to run the race. But you got to call on him. The psalmist right that I look to the hill from which cometh my help. All my help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And all these other things you want shall be added unto you. But we go about it backwards. We seek all the worldly stuff first and then try to get Christ on the back end. If you're going to complete the assignment, you got to call on Jesus. You've got to spend some time with it. And I'm not talking about just Wednesday and Sunday. I'm talking about some early in the morning times. I'm talking about some midday struggle times. I'm talking about when the husband and wife can't get along time. I'm talking about when the kids are going wayward time. When you got to go down to the police precinct, pick up a child. You got to call on him all the way there and back. When your money's short and bills are due, you got to call on him. When you're driving and something happened, stop, call on him. Say, Lord, I need you, Father. If you don't have a prayer life, you got to develop one. I remember when we were their age and we used to say, now you lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. We didn't understand it. We just said it because mama said we had to say it. But God has kept us. And now when you get a little older and you experience some things called life, you understand what that prayer means. If I lay down and he just covers me, he keeps all the enemies away. When I lay down, he restores me. When I lay down, he rejuvenates me. He wakes me up the next morning, ready to go. So you got to develop a prayer life. And I remember my grandmother being the head of our family when we were boys. And that was one requirement. Everybody that came from her was going to worship. I can't say the same today. We play so many different things. But the assignment has not changed. We've got to complete the assignment. Christ shows us this on Calvary. I don't know about you, but the agony of going from courtroom to courtroom, the agony of being whipped, we paint a rosy picture. But if you were there, it was horrible. The whipping, most men don't survive. Just to be flogged 30 times across your back. Most men didn't survive it. The two was a whip, stretched out, but at the end it had like a, a bone in it, sharpened. And when it hits you, it would tear your flesh. Now the first one you scream, by number 30 you out. And the Bible declares and the commentary says most men don't survive that. But look at Jesus. Not only did he survive it, but he carried his own cross to Calvary. So I want to encourage us this morning. You need to be praying. I don't know what your lashes look like. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your assignment. But if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, in order for you to complete the assignment, you're going to need Christ. And you're going to need a prayer life. The second thing our text gives us is that he says, I thirst. Many of us believe from this area that he was dehydrated, that he was struggling. But when you're fully human and fully divine, you don't struggle. See, in the flesh, we struggle. We struggle, we war against what is right and what is wrong. So what we do is we might take a nip of this or a sip of that or two to this or two to that. Christ didn't need any of that. All Christ had to do was call it in. And all he had to do is say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. Father, I need you to come down and reassure these folks that everything's going to be all right. All Father had to do was just send him an angel. And all the angel would do is touch his lips, and he would be whole.
But see, we look at the thirst thing as if he was hurting, he was struggling. But the thirst was to prepare us for the next words that were going to come out of his mouth. Him being fully human and divine, Christ was not dehydrated. He just wanted to make sure we heard the final word, which John recorded for us. Now, we, when we connect everything, we know that everything he was doing on the Christ has now been accomplished. Anybody want to pay the price? Anybody want to go to Calvary for me? Would you go for your own family, let alone somebody you never met? Well, that's what Jesus did. He never met us. But John 17 says that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, not only did he pray for the disciples, not only did he pray for himself, but he prayed for those of us to come. So he knew someday we would all be in his place of worship. But I challenge you today to, if you're going to accomplish the mission, you got to say the right word. Jesus said, I thirst. He was announcing that the worst of this was over. Or well, maybe you don't understand what the worst was. He was fully human and fully divine. He came down through 40 and two generations. He left his rightful place to take a lowly place. He grew up and walked some 33 years. Even in the walk, his own friends hated on him. His own friends betrayed him. He says the worst of this is over. I went to Calvary. The old songwriters say to save a wretch like you and me. I went to Calvary that you might have a right relationship. I went to Calvary. They didn't take me. I went to Calvary for you. And so he wanted us to know that the worst was over. You didn't get the rightful whooping you deserved when you should have. The adults know what I'm talking about. You know what you've done, and you didn't get what you rightfully deserved. You know, some of those things, nothing happened because they happened on Calvary. You know, some of those things you should have went to jail for, and he said you were pardoned, it happened on Calvary. You know, some of those things that you know, that you know should have took you out, it happened on Calvary. But it's up to you to understand that. So he had paid the price, the worst was over, and he was ready to announce it to the world. If you just bring yourself to Christ. See, when we're in sin, all we think about is what we're doing. But the Bible says that when a sinner knows, he thirsts. He seeks whatever it is he's thirsting after. I challenge you today to come to see Jesus. Come meet a savior who can kill and heal and destroy all of those things you're dealing with. Christ will satisfy your every need. I don't know about you this morning, but if you got a need, why don't you take it to Christ? Anybody want to come to Christ right now? It's time, if you know who he is, and you've been struggling with this old world in which we live in, and you don't have any peace, why don't you give your life to Christ? Christ stands ready to receive you. Jesus said he has successfully offered up himself in substitute of you and I. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your sins are. And just because you're in the house of the Lord, everybody in here is not saved. I know that. Everybody in here is struggling. Whether they want to admit it or not, we're all struggling. Well, here's what you see. Another point to give you. Another thing in the text is, he said, it is finished. Amen, somebody. Amen. I ain't got to worry about it anymore. It is finished. The price has been paid. Not only did he say, I thirst, but the Bible says he cries out in a loud voice. It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Whatever you're going through today, whatever you're dealing with, you can say it's over now. When you give your life to Christ, you can say it's over. We see him here on the cross saying this for me and you over 2,000 years ago. 
he cried out with a loud voice, it is finished. No more anguish, no more wailing, no more crying, no more moaning. The tremendous assignment has been completed. Jesus died with a cry of victory on his lip. What did he get victory over? Over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Victory over Satan. Amen. Victory that you and I might have a relationship yes. with the Father. That's good news this morning. Yes. That we've been redeemed and purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. Yes. That's good news this morning. Yes. That we now have a true relationship because of what happened on Calvary. It's good news that you and I can love one another. It's good news that we have a brother who intercedes on our behalf. It is good news that his works, his assignment is completed. I don't know about you this morning, but whenever you get an assignment completed, if I was a student, I'd be looking for an A. All I want to hear him say is, serve it, well done. Service. Well done. You've been faithful over a few things, but I'm going to make you ruler over many. I don't know about you this morning, but on this morning, a lamb was slain that you and I would be saved. A lamb was taken to Calvary that you and I would have a right relationship. His task was adequately done and he brought glory to the Father. I don't know about you this morning, but Jesus has accomplished his assignment. Well, the Bible tells us they take him down. He fulfills the promise that none of his bones would be broken. The Bible tells us they pierced him in his side. You heard it this morning. It was the blood that came screaming down that you and I are able to plunge ourselves under and wash away all of our sin. I don't know about you this morning, but they took him down from a cross. Asked for his body, laid his body in a barred grave. I don't know about you this morning, but he says it is finished. He has completed his assignment. The Bible declares that he laid in the barred tomb of Joseph. They wrapped him in swollen clothing. That he was laying there all day Friday and all day Saturday and all Saturday night. But I'm recording that this day, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Power in heaven and on earth. Early Sunday morning, he got up with justice in his hands. Early Sunday morning, he got up with love in his hands. Early Sunday morning, he got up with healing in his hands. Early Sunday morning, he got up for you and for me. Early Sunday morning, he redeemed our soul. Early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he was there for you and for me. Assignment completed. But that's not how the story ends. Somebody knows something about the story. That that's not how it ends. It's, he's coming back. He's coming back. Will you be ready when he comes back? The Bible says man knows the day nor hour when he's coming back. But he's coming back. And if you would allow it to be with what you see, you would say he's on his way. So let me ask you, will you be ready? Will you have completed your assignment that he called you to do? Have you raised someone in the name of Jesus Christ? Have you taught the word of God? Have you lectured, have you taught, have you fed, have you served, have you done what God has called you to do? It's up to you. The Bible says when he come back, he coming back for a church. Not the mortar, not the building, but the heart of man and woman. And he will separate the wheat from the tap. 
So if you don't know, get in your word. Get your assignment and complete your assignment. Amen.